There is one big mystery in Call of Duty Zombies that has always stumped me. Even now with the storyline over, it has still never been explained to us and that is the Nuketown Zombies loading screen. But after doing a lot of research for this video, I think I'm as close as we're ever going to be to finding out what's really going on here. Okay, so in the original Nuketown Zombies loading screen, because we have two different versions, one which is the loading screen for Nuketown Zombies in Black Ops 1, and the other is from the Zombies comics, which is slightly different. This is the original up on screen now, where we can see on the left we have some sort of machine with electricity coming out of it. On the right we see a zoomed out version, where it looks to be drilling into a crater. And then below that we have someone in some sort of pilot suit and next to him part of a machine and then on the new nuketown loading screen things were zoomed out even more and slightly different where we now see on the left instead of just this device two people watching above it is a huge dome and then the person in the pilot suit he's now more zoomed out and we can see his name badge which reads Schuster. But that was it. In Nuketown Zombies, or the remastered version of the map, which is Alpha Omega, we don't hear or see any mention of what's going on here. So that's always left us with questions and kind of feeling empty on this subject. Almost like, well, what is going on here? Now over in Garrett Crove, there is a cipher that you can find in that map, which seems to go along with what we see happening in Nuketown, because when you decode it, it reads, finally, the lab is almost complete. Security measures have been put in place, so the chance of detection by the Americans is very unlikely. We also have several agents embedded with the staff as insurance. We will keep the individuals on stasis, on ice to speak, and continue the specimen rotation once we finish drawing more power from the drill. Oh, I almost forgot. The sequencing for the current blood samples is as follows. S S M J A B R. This cipher in Garrett Karevi mentions drawing power from a drill and what do we see in Nuketown's loading screen? A device that doesn't look like your ordinary drill, but from the operation we see it performing, it is drilling into this crater. And we know that's what it is and what it's doing because we are told it multiple times. In the Canorium, which is a timeline of a lot of what happens in the zombie story, it says on September 1st, 2025, in desperate need of more element 115, Broken Arrow uses an excavator to drill near the nuclear testing facility known as Nuketown. So in the original Nuketown loading screen, that's what we are seeing happen. Broken Arrow using this drill to excavate 115 from the earth because they are desperate for it. They need a lot of it. But then when we got the new zoomed out loading screen and it revealed that the person in the pilot suit is Schuster, it just left us with more questions. Why was Schuster here being a Group 935 scientist, not a Broken Arrow? Why did Broken Arrow need so much 115? Going back to that Gorod Karovi cipher, what link does that have to it? Because it also mentions in there a laboratory, specimen rotation, blood samples, the initials SSMJABR, which are our transit characters, Samuel Strulinger, Malton Johnson, Abigail Brighton, and Russman. What is their connection to the drilling going on in Nuketown? So let me take this back to the very beginning, because in the map Origins on the walls, you can actually find a schematic of a drill that looks very similar to the one we see in Nuketown. But because, well, there's two things here. One, Origins was a Group 935 site, which had nothing to do with Broken Arrow. And two, Origins takes place in a totally different dimension to the original Nuketown. Not to mention Origins is in 1918. The drilling at Nuketown took place in 2025. Now we know Origins was one of the main dig sites for 115. That was one of the reasons why Group 935 started operating here. So we can see, obviously, Group 935 made this 115 extraction drill, as they call it, to extract the rock from the ground. Group 935 used this drill to extract the element back in 1918, and then in 2025, Broken Arrow used a similar looking drill to extract 115 in Nevada. In the original timeline, that's about as simple as the story gets. In the aftermath of the multiple zombie outbreaks that had occurred around the world thanks to what Group 935 were doing at Doris, which was a German company funded by the Nazis, the Americans decided to fund their own program with the primary intention of preventing another undead outbreak. But that wasn't Broken Arrow's only focus. The program was to create its own wonder weapons, its own versions of Group 935's teleporters, and its own zombies. But in order to do all of this, they needed Element 115. And because Groom Lake had a lot of it, but they had no way to extract it, they created this drill for that exact purpose. However, as we know, about a month and a half later, as a result of Broken Arrow's drilling in Nuketown, it ended up triggering a nuclear bomb which exploded and destroyed everything. And that's where Nuketown Zombies kicks in. That's where we see the CIA and the CDC operatives are sent to the facility, the characters that we play as. When they get there, they fight off against the undead, but eventually one of the missiles from the moon hits Nuketown, killing and destroying anything remaining on site. The only survivor was Malton, who was 
hiding in the nuclear bunker. So that was a relatively simple explanation of the original loading screen, although there were still a few questions. But then when we got the new one and we saw this huge dome above the drill, the floating bubble surrounding it became more clear. There looks to be people standing above the crater and Schuster being the pilot. Well, we asked once again, okay, what's actually going on here? There's clearly a lot more to this. Now, as for the big dome above the drill. Well, if we go back to one of the World at War radios that we had in Doris before Nuketown even came out, this is what Dr. Maxis said. Sophia, this letter is to go to the Reichstag High Command immediately. Gentlemen, it is with the utmost urgency that I draw your attention to the lack of funding being injected into the giant project. While I believe we are close to realizing the ultimate plan, we still have several years of development before it is ready. It would be folly to cut our expenditure so early in our development. As you know, early tests on the DG2 have easily outperformed expectations, and we fully anticipate mass producing the Wunderwaffe within the next few years. Work on the matter transference has, however, come to a standstill. We simply do not have enough Element 115 to continue the experiments. The test subjects have survived teleportation, but are currently unresponsive to commands and cannot be controlled. If we are to overcome this obstacle, we need to increase the frequency and size of the experiment. To this end, I suggest we find not only a regular supply of 115, but that we also find a larger conduit to channel the energy. Our operatives in America have informed us that the U.S. has a large supply of the element at the Nevada base. So time is of the essence if we are to stay ahead of them. This cannot be done if you cut the budget, nor can it be done if you insist on pressuring us into action before we are ready. I am, of course, available for discussion on the matter, but in the meantime, I will continue with the work here and try to win this damned war. Signed, etc., etc., Dr. Maxis. So Maxis is saying to the Reichstag High Command, if you want us to stay ahead of the race in front of the Americans, if you want us to create an undead army for you, well, we need more Element 115. He says not only do we need to find a regular supply of 115, but also a larger conduit to channel the energy. Our operatives in America inform us that the US has a large supply of it at the Nevada base. So back in Doris in 1945, Maxis was looking for a larger conduit to channel the energy of 115. Not only didn't he have enough of it, but even if he did, he didn't have anything big enough to extract its energy. However, the Americans did. Could this dome above the drill be the conduit, the device that's extracting energy from the 115 that's being drilled? This is interesting though because Maxis is talking about this in 1945, yet it wasn't until in the original timeline, the same one that Doris took place in, it wasn't until the year 2025 where Broken Arrow did this drilling, a long time after, that was all a part of the cycle. However, we know as a part of the Broken Cycle, things were slightly different. In the map classified, which takes place in the Pentagon, partly where members of Broken Arrow operated, you can find on one of the boards, schematics of the Nuketown drill. There is some writing at the bottom, which I've tried my very best to make out what it says, I can't. If you guys can get a clearer version, then please let me know in the comment section below. But in the middle, I can make out what that says, which is start date, Q1 1964, projected completion date 1964. So as a part of the Broken Cycle, Broken Arrow actually started drilling in Nuketown in 1964, not 2025. And we also know, whereas in the original timeline it was the drill that set off the nuclear bomb, well in Alpha Omega it is Avogadro that sets the bomb off. So events are different. This time in 1947, as a result of Operation Stapler, which was where a lot of German scientists and other employees went to work for the Americans and the Russians after the end of World War II, Dr. Schuster began employment at the Pentagon. He was assigned to their 115 division and his focus was research and development. Schuster's main task, what the Americans wanted him to do, was link a teleporter from Groom Lake to the moon. But of course this, along with all of the other experiments that Broken Arrow wanted to do, again, create their own undead army, create their own wonder weapons, all of which required a lot of Element 115. And so, on September 3rd, 1963, Purnell, who was the station chief of the CIA at Groom Lake, told Schuster that they would create a drill to extract as much Element 115 as was needed. Personal Log, September 3rd, 1963. The discussion with McNamara was a resounding success. His plans for it are bigger than I ever thought possible. Ah! <laughs> the fools. It, it was so easy. 
All those hawks over there think about is war. I offered them a morsel, a nugget, and had the meeting out of the palm of my hand. <laughs> yeah, well, good riddance. They'll get their war, and I'll get my riches. They want to destroy this Samantha? That's so narrow-minded. Why destroy her when we can take her power and harness it for ourselves? Ugh. With the amount of element 115 buried down there, just imagine what we could do. We could mold the earth anew, create it in our image. Ha! A toast. Here's to Dr. Schuster for gifting me this opportunity. When we get the excavator up and running at the test site, I'll be sure to get him access. <laughs> and here's to Broken Arrow. And to opening new worlds. That also explains why we see Schuster here as well. Pernell says in that radio, when the excavator is up and running at Nuketown, he'd be sure to give Schuster access. I would question what did Schuster need access for besides from needing 115 for his teleportation experiments, but would he have actually needed to have been there to do that? Surely they would have had other people to extract 115 for him and give him what he needs instead of what we see here, which looks like Schuster either overseeing what's going on or operating the drill himself. And why he's the only one wearing this suit when the other two people on the left aren't, I don't know why he's even wearing the suit at all. It does look very much like a pilot suit. It could be a hazmat suit, I guess, but just judging by the mask. So where exactly Schuster is? Maybe he's that high up inside of the conduit that he needs this suit and this mask on for oxygen, whereas the other two people are lower down. You can also see two people near to the crater. Again, who they are or why they're that close to the drilling. Are they just watching? Are they being sacrificed? Have Broken Arrow sent those people out there as an experiment to find out what happens if you get that close? There's no answer. And the other one, why are there bubbles or small circles surrounding the drill? Initially, when I first saw this a long time ago, I thought, well, this looks like it's underwater, but that can't be the case. We know 100% this is one of the craters in Nuketown that has been drilled. It's not underwater, so what these bubbles are. They could be floating balls of 115 as we've seen in multiple zombies maps, but they're usually rocks, not smooth circles like this. It could just be a representation of energy coming off the drill. We don't know, and I would also question, well, there was an excuse for us not seeing the drill in the original Nuketown, because it would have been destroyed by the nuclear bomb, but in Alpha Omega, which takes place on the same date as Nuketown, October 13th, 2025, but as a part of the Broken Cycle, in this map, the nuclear bomb gets set off by Avogadro. So since we don't see the drill in Alpha Omega, what happened to it? It was used in this timeline in the 60s, so that leaves plenty of time for them to dismantle it. Maybe it was just long removed by the time we got there. But that brings me all the way back to the beginning with this cipher, which still leaves a lot of unexplained. And if you're familiar with the zombie storyline, this cipher really makes no sense when you put it together. It talks about the lab almost being complete. When you hear that, you think of the lab in Alcatraz, and that's almost confirmed at the end when it mentions sequencing of the blood samples and the initials of our Victor's characters, because in Richtofen's lab under Alcatraz, our Victor's characters are there on stasis, on ice. All of that is mentioned in this cipher. I'd be perfectly okay with that if it was all just talked about the events in Alcatraz, but it mentions drawing power from the drill. What has the drill in Nuketown got to do with the Alcatraz laboratory? And the only thing I can think of is the stasis chambers in the Alcatraz laboratory were powered by the drill in Nevada. The only problem I have with that is the drill wasn't set up in Nuketown until the 60s, whereas all of this Alcatraz takes place around the 40s. But because it's in a pocket dimension, we see a lot of time traveling here. Perhaps Richtofen, who I'm assuming this cipher is from, has used interdimensional travel to somehow take power from the Nevada drill in a different point in space time and use it to power the stasis chambers. The only people that knew about Richtofen's laboratory was Stanley Ferguson and the Illuminati, but you can tell by the wording, it's definitely not Stanley, being that he's an American himself. I don't feel like he would say the chance of detection by the Americans is very unlikely. That sounds like something Richtofen would say, but the Canorium does mention Stanley Ferguson waiting to put the Victor's characters in stasis, which is what has been talked about here. That's not too important, but what is, is the fact that it seems like the Alcatraz laboratory, or maybe just the stasis chambers there, is being powered by the drill in Nevada. At one point, I did think, is the laboratory possibly referring to Zero Base, which is also referred to as a lab in the Zombies comics? Also in Zero Base, we have these machines where the Victor's characters sit on and their blood is extracted, but I wouldn't say the characters here were kept on stasis or ice, which makes me think it must be referring to the Alcatraz lab. So a lot is answered here, but it still leaves a few unanswered questions. 
Group 935's excavation drill that they used in 1918 Origins. How did Broken Arrow manage to create a drill similar to that all those years later? We know this drill is excavating 115 from Nuketown, but is that dome above it a conduit to extract the amount of 115 needed? Was Schuster piloting the machinery? If not, why is he wearing that suit? What happened to the drill in Alpha Omega? Because we know it gets destroyed in the original Nuketown, but not in Alpha. So we're still left with a few questions that we just don't have answers to and I very much doubt. I'm 99% sure we're never going to, so all we can do from this point on is theorise. But hopefully that answers this mystery in a simple way. This drill was drilling 115 from Nuketown to power Broken Arrow's experiments. And it looks like Rick Toffin also used it to power the Alcatraz laboratory. So there we go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, hopefully you've enjoyed the video today. If you have, drop a like rating. Make sure you are subscribed to stay up to date with the latest content on the channel. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Until then, goodbye.